<laughs> Robin. So, um, yesterday, I guess we got to start by talking about the end of yesterday's show because so many people so confused out yeah. there, Jimmy. They're just very confused. They're, they're very, panicking. Very worried and they're panicking. Yesterday, we had an all star lineup, let's be honest with you. Wow. I mean, uh, if Anthony was here, it would truly have been an all star lineup. But with that said, we had Jay Moore, Jim Norton. Look, I'm pointing because I'm trying to remember where everyone was sitting. <laughs> Ronnie, Ronnie B. And Louis C.K. And, and and also Paul Reiser was a throw in, just yep. a little throw in, you know, a big network star. He he wasn't even part of the All Star lineup yesterday, and we were uh, we were we were having a, a damn good show yesterday. And uh, for the people out there, we set up a Ricky Gervais interview, and I don't even know how much we were allowed to say, but now that it's done, I guess we could talk a little bit more about it. Ricky Gervais is promoting this HBO show, Funny Funny Talking Funny or Funny Talk. Holy shit. Talking funny, I believe. Okay. This is going to be on HBO April 22nd. So, uh, according to Roland, Ricky only picked about five places he wanted to promote this thing. We're the only radio show. He said no to Howard. He And uh, I don't even know where else. A, a few TV spots and us is 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 it. Because uh, we, we're learning uh, that Ricky's a very loyal guy. And he likes us. He's had a good time with us in the past. So he said, absolutely, I'll go on their show. But here's the deal. Uh, I, I have to come in on Monday, and they can't run it until after my David Letterman appearance. And that, by the way, is a Letterman stipulation. That's that's not about radio, but Dave wants to be the first guy who you do the press with when you do him. And it's just guys like him or The Tonight Show, it's just what they can do when they do it. Right. So, of course, we're going to agree to that. Sure. We rarely tape any uh, any any interviews. We've done them here and there over the years. I, I, I don't even remember I don't the last rem one we've done. It's been a while. Dude, I, I don't remember. I mean, have, have, I'm sure you guys have done them. This is the first one in all the years I've been with you that I can remember doing. The first here and there. And probably we haven't done it in many years. Yeah. You're right. So, of course, we said yes to that. Yeah. The other thing was because he had all the press, he said he could only tape the interview at 10 o'clock Monday morning. So that's why the show ended abruptly yesterday. Yeah. I would have loved to kept going. Absolutely. But you yeah. missed nothing because everything that we did is going to air. Right, of, of course. But people were bitching and complaining like, man, you had all those great people in there. Why would you end the show like that? We, we had no choice. Yeah. And it had to go uh, to the supercomputer and start the best of or whatever. But we stayed right where we were in our seats and right. we continued the show for at least another hour. I think we did at least an hour, right? At least an hour. And it felt very, very comfortable. And normally, we, just knowing that people are listening means something. It really does yeah. change your vibe. Yeah, absolutely. But with everybody in the studio, when Ricky came in, it was fucking great. Him and Louie were just attacking each other. They're very good friends. Yeah, I feel like everyone heard this already because we're sitting where we usually right. sit. But no, it, yeah, it's going to air later this week. Yes. And uh, the chemistry that Louie and Ricky have is it's great. Tremendous. And, at, 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 you know, there were times we were all just staring at them, just, you know, do their thing. So that's why the show ended at 10 yesterday. And you're going to hear it. And we agreed to it just because we love Ricky Gervais, and he agreed to do the show. So, yeah, of course we're going to take it. Right. So I think it's going to air Friday. That was what motivated me to come in this week. Like, right. Open said, maybe we'll do Monday, Tuesday. I'm like, I was supposed to go to L.A. Yeah. Like, ah. And then they roll it so we can get Ricky on Monday. Right. But it's a pre-tape, and we're like, okay. Uh, you we have to do that. that. That's the only reason we came in yeah. this week. We would love to be off this week. And actually, we came in today because we have a big interview with Rich Voss. So we said, you know what? <laughs> we have to do another day of radio before we step aside and take a little break. Yes, it's also a pre-tape. We're taping it today to air at an undetermined date. <laughs> yeah, and that date may never be determined. It may never be determined. So then, uh, you know, then I, I try to do the right thing and explain this stuff on Twitter and then... Then people are like, well, why would you do that? And I, and I, I tweeted some like, are there really people this dumb in the world? Because yeah. I just explained it. I just explained the whole thing. It was, it was right there for you to read. To answer your question, yes, there are. That's what a bunch of people said. I hope I hate to tell you, but yes, there are a lot of really dumb people out there. So that's uh, that's what happened yesterday. It was fun, man. He was Gervais was hilarious. Um, you know, again, you missed. You'll get all of it. You'll hear the whole hour. And uh, it's a show on HBO where he interviews, it was like him, Seinfeld, Louis C.K., and uh, Chris, Chris Rock, Rock talking comedy. Right. And it was it was amazing how it just started mid-conversation. It's a great 
thing on HBO, just a conversation between four co- comics about co- comedy. It's not like Tough Crowd. Mm-hmm. I was worried it's going to be like a Tough Crowd thing, and, yeah, that but it bo- wasn't. That would bother you, wouldn't it, Jimmy? No, I mean, if it wasn't done right, it would annoy me just because Tough Crowd's not around. But it was not like that. It was, it was just a different tone. It was a really, really interesting discussion. Right. Like Chris and Jerry, you could see the differences in their stand-up and the way they, uh, their philosophies about stand-up. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was really, really well done. The only thing I wish I asked Ricky yesterday, who was his influences? We never yeah, got to that. I know. That was the only thing. Because, you know, he's, he's from across the pond. I could have talked to him for another hour. He, he's one of the greatest interviews ever. He could I, just talk about anything. Yeah. And then he looked at me afterwards and he said, you're going to cut all that down. I'm like, no way. We're, yeah. we're, we're airing that entire hour. Everything. With all the scars and bruises. Who cares? Yeah. Uh, Vince, thank you, Vince and Bayonne. He writes, you explained why you ended the show at 10 at least three times yesterday. So so people heard the explanation yesterday, but still were confused. And they'll be confused even though we just explained it again. If people didn't listen to your explanation, they're stupid. So, like, why would you cut off Louie? Like, we got the rest of the Louie interview. Yeah, technically we didn't cut out anything. Nothing. He was here for the. That's he came because Ricky was going to be here, and it was just kind of like a fun, right, additional thing. It's like we took a commercial break yesterday, and then four days later, you get to hear the rest of the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's a little weird, I'll admit, but we got it. It didn't feel weird doing it though. I guess because the energy of all the guys in here, it felt very comfortable. Yeah. Also bummed that we didn't get to talk to Dave Grohl yesterday. That would have been nice. You know, I haven't talked to him in years, but we talked to him. I don't know, at least four, I would say at least four times when we were at AF, when he was just getting the Foo Fighters thing uh, going. You know, we supported him big time. He he he, he showed up at uh, events, and uh, he was on our rock bus, and he was just a great guy. And I think we talked to him also once at NEW early on. It's been many, many years, but it just bums me out some of these guys you know you had a great time with when they were first starting out their new project. Obviously, Dave Grohl was fucking famous with Nirvana, but... Kind of need a little help to get the Foo Fighters off the ground. Right. It's 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 laughable to hear that right now, I know. But there was a time, you know, that the Nirvana guys were really hoping they could continue with other bands. And it certainly didn't work with the other guy. with uh, Chris? Chris. Well, yeah, didn't work with him. He turned out to be a politician in Seattle. But, you know, Dave Grohl used to call us all the time. And to see him wandering around here and, and, and knowing that he could give a fuck about us is kind of a bummer. I'm not going to lie to you. It's we, kind of a bummer. I had a thing set up where I was going to get a photo with the Foo Fighters as a band, and yeah. I wanted that. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I couldn't walk out of the Gervais interview. Yeah. For, it's the first time I've done that where I, I it's like, that's how much I respect that for Ricky Gervais. I couldn't, there's very few guys who I couldn't walk out of for a minute. Right. To get a shot with the Foo Fighters. I just can't walk out of Ricky Gervais. I can't do it. Was it killing you? No, I didn't think of it. I didn't care. Because to me, Ricky's more important than the Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters will be around again. Yeah. They like this place. They they did a bunch of stuff for Sirius XM. They did Howard, and I think they took over Alt Nation. They're supposed to take over Alt Nation for four days, and they recorded it in one hour. <laughs> I love tearing down the walls. In one hour, they were able to do four days of programming. That's how important your job is on radio. <laughs> I love when people take over a station. They don't take it over. No, of course they don't. They read a bunch of stuff. It takes them ten minutes. You know, Ooh. I was listening to Hits One one day, and uh, Selena Gomez took over for what the whole countdown or something. Yeah. I'm like she didn't take over. She's not. She's not sitting there while the fucking music is playing, waiting to talk again. She is. Oh, she is, Sam. Yeah. Are you representing fucking Hits One? Selena Gomez hung out all weekend that weekend. Yeah, she did. Yep, she did, huh? Yep. Who got her the coffee and stuff? And she got kept her, her going. Between songs, she just ran down to the kitchen and got some coffee, and then was back to Jock. And she couldn't even leave here. She couldn't go to a hotel or no. nothing, right? No. She, she was like a slave. And she just knew little uh, little factoids about every artist, too. It was just all off the top of her head. Wow, it's just amazing how that happens. Radio's just amazing. It's great stuff. <laughs> Radio is so magical. I, I mean, yeah, Jim, you should get the Foo Fighters when they're back for those four days. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, when they're taking over. Yeah. When they take over, what, All Nation? Yeah. I, I, I love the, All Nation, but... I heard the PD for All Nation is getting nervous, though, because he's like, geez, these guys are taking over. For four days, we get to see them wandering around the halls? Yeah, they're going to be like, nice. Jocks. Nice. Can we maybe go on All Nation with them and just say hi? It's up to them. They're taking over. And just, I want to be needy and go, Dave, remember <laughs> me? <laughs> he, he wouldn't fucking recognize me if I walked by him. It's just Maybe. so weird how this business is. There was a time, hey guys, now you been? Uh, it's been the a worst. while. It's the worst. But he kind of meant it back then. 
because AAF was a really important station for breaking a lot of new bands, because uh, I, I could get into some philosophy here, but whatever. But uh, they didn't care about ratings as much, because we had a weird signal. So that allowed a radio station to take more chances. You know what I mean? So Lots of radio stations Not that now. they were taking chances with Foo Fighters. I mean, there was a buzz that this band could could work. Dude, I'm, I'm really not familiar with their music. Really? No. I don't. I, what I've seen of them, I liked, but I mean... Yeah, they got some great songs. They were very good. And the fucking Dave Grohl is extremely talented. Uh, isn't that just flat out lying to your customers? What, the takeover? Yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> I don't think so. But radio's very magical. That's what I want everyone to know today. It's very magical. I, I, a silly question, yeah. right? If we want to basically do anything, we need to go through a thousand layers of legal and everything. Mm. But how could you just say that you're having this huge band, they're going to DJ for four days? Like, you're just lying. <laughs> you're, like, where's the, where's the fucking fine print for that? I don't know. You're yeah, just we, lying to a whole bunch of people. You're so right. 20 million people. You're like, yeah. Yeah, where you. is the fine print? You're right. <laughs> and if we want to do something, there's a lot of fine print. And it's, it's over the dumbest things. You're right. No, I mean, let's, uh, it's magical, though. I mean, you, you got the Foo Fires, and they're going to be... When is this happening? It's going to be very exciting around here for four days. Yeah, I'm not sure yet, but it'll be a takeover. We'll all realize it when yeah, it's happening. Yeah, let me know, please, Sam. And Sam, um, I guess while you're on mic, uh, you killed the wrestler, huh? No, I didn't kill anybody. The wrestling... You know the wrestling death clock there, Jimmy? Yes, the, I Or do. the wrestler death clock? We have to reset it? Yes, we do have now, to reset it. Now, the bit has been... I don't, when did we start this bit? A couple of years ago? Yeah, at this point, it, it was must have been two years ago, probably. Two years ago. Okay. And and the bit was simple. Can we go 100 days without a wrestler dying? Yeah. And there's been some wrestlers that we haven't even added to our list because they were kind of fringe wrestlers. They yeah. had to be... They had to be uh, they they had to be a name where you know most people would un recognize in the wrestling community, right? Right. Or or either that or like they had a career and they died very young. Okay. So, and and we once again have to reset the clock and, and once again we have not gone a hundred days. No, everybody without thought, a wrestler dying. Everybody thought we had because we hadn't mentioned it on the air. Mm -hmm. But you know we just didn't bring it up. Of course, there. Well, I think the last one was in September. That was the, the last, last time we did this? The last one we mentioned. Okay. That was when... Yeah, uh, and then it was a bit we don't really feel like doing. Because it's like, yeah, we know. They just keep dying. Right. So, all right. The we last went, time we talked about this was September. Yeah, that's when we went 73 days. Hey, that's not bad. That's that's a long time. And w and the 73 days between who and who? That was uh, between Giant Gonzalez. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. We went 11 days. 11. Yeah. Between, That's a lot different than 73, Sam. Well, we went 73 after him. Okay. It was uh, Bastion Booger, and then 11 days later, the Giant Gonzalez. The Giant Gonzalez. Right. Yeah. That's when we went 73 days before King Curtis Ikea died. But he was 78. So that was okay. That's not that shouldn't count them because that's that's like a normal age to die. People they do die. I mean, the, yeah, but, <laughs> they have to yeah, die. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, if you go with Major League Baseball, they could easily go 100 days without any baseball player, sure. you know, new or old. Dying. Probably. So I think we're we should just throw the old guys in there because that's fair enough. Yeah. 51 days after King Curtis Ikea, it was Sean Osborne. He was not a big guy, but he was in developmental for WWE. He was in their farm system for two years, and he was 34. What did he die of? Suicide. Why the suicide? It sounded like he had a good life going. No, he was, was going to be called up to the majors. Well, he was in the farm league for two years and then got cut. Oh, all right. Oh, no. So he didn't have a lot going on, I guess. Okay. How depressing. Yeah. It seems like a very depressing business. How many years after he got cut did he kill himself? Well, he got cut in 2008, and then he killed himself in January of this year. 11. Okay. All right. He made so, a couple years. 34? Yeah. 34, yeah. And then 53 days after that, it was Sir Oliver Humperdinck. Wait, these are all wrestlers since September? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. And, uh, March 9th. And these are known wrestlers? Yeah, Sir Oliver, Sir Oliver Humperdinck? Humperdinck was, oh, he's not known. He was a known... <laughs> No, he's not. He you, think, you think Sam just wants this bit to continue? Is that what no, you're saying? I, I would rather go the 100 days. Remember, radio's very magical. <laughs> this Sir, is some of the magic right here. Sir Oliver, see, there's pictures of him. He was, a, guy, man, he was a manager. Was he on, in the WWE? Oh, yes. 
Okay, then he's that's, that's he was fair in, enough. In the eighties. How he, old was he? He was sixty two. There's two dead people right there. Oh, ba- yeah, Bam Bam Bigelow. He was, he was Bam Bam Bigelow's manager. And they're both dead. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. He was sixty two. He died of pneumonia. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, it's funny. I got a... <laughs> yeah. Pneumonia, huh? Yeah. Sir Oliver Humperdinck. Did he like half slices? <laughs> I don't know how much of a slice he ate. <laughs> Did he like half slices? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, no. That's always the, the worst. That's like the fucking code word. Wait, isn't he the, <laughs> isn't he the dude that used to work uh, for XM? Oh. The fucking who guy? No, I don't think oh, he is. Oh, God, yeah, Bruce, yeah. What? Bruce, uh, fuck. <laughs> what the fuck? Bruce Kelly. Bruce Kelly. Yeah. Can you play Bruce Kelly for me? <laughs> I don't give a fuck where in the middle of the wrestling bed. Bruce Kelly is the greatest thing to ever happen to satellite radio. It's not us. It's not Howard. It's Bruce Kelly. And the day he cried over the who is the greatest moment on satellite radio. I challenge you to find a better moment. Through your tears... Full clip is one minute. Uh, we got nothing but time to waste, sir. <laughs> Hit that fucking thing. Bruce Kelly, everyone. Is this live? Uh, yes, we're live. Uh, Bruce, <laughs> where were you, buddy? Uh, I was right up under these so, hogs. Uh... You know, it's amazing watching uh, Pete Townsend and Roger Daltrey uh, perform these songs after all these years and still have the the full spirit of what they do under control. I mean, you know, Townsend just continues to be an amazing guitar player. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm absolutely crying. I can't help oh. it. I really can't. This is no fake. I, you know, the whole oh. moment just kind of uh, um, kind of got to me with that video. Yeah, the video was uh, very powerful. Yeah, yeah, that was... Uh, that's uh, This is very awkward. I'm sorry, but... Uh, it was just very... I mean, you know, it's just the who. I, you know, I can't help but be a 14-year-old kid out there with the who. Yeah. yeah. That's it. I'm sorry. You were seeing them live, I guess that was in color. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. They were live on stage, but the black and white was happening on the big screen too. So yeah. uh, through your tears. Wow. <laughs> so there's uh, two more to go here uh, at Hyde Park, and the crowd. Like an idiot. I'm sorry. Oh, really? Okay. No, no. It's just, hey, look, it's that's just overwhelming. The, yeah, that's what this. You know, that really is yeah. what this is all about. There are certain yeah. moments that touch everybody. Yeah. You know what makes that clip great? Many things. Many what, do you, things. what did you enjoy this time? Well, unfortunately, um, George Taylor Morris is no longer with us. The guy with the great radio voice. He was an amazing fucking guy. An amazing radio guy. Smooth as fucking silk. He interviewed us when we first came back to Satellite Radio. He probably had... Uh, he probably had stage three cancer when that was being recorded, and he wasn't crying. <laughs> he wasn't crying over his cancer. And here you got Bruce Kelly fucking losing it over the who. And the best part was the silence, because they were just standing there, <laughs> and they would not bail him out. And that was the beauty of that. He was like, oh, I'm absolutely crying. Yeah. But then nothing. You could just see that they were just standing there with the mic, yeah. waiting. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're not going to help you out. And it was such a great moment for Satellite that uh, what XM did was made sure that fucking Bruce Kelly hit the fucking bricks. <laughs> Get out of here. They fucking got rid of Bruce Kelly, unfortunately. He ran the 80s channel. Yeah. They didn't fire him for that. But they... Oh, this is a Bruce Kelly fun fact. 1997 became the first heterosexual to be Grand Marshal of a nationally recognized gay pride parade after numerous gay public figures declined, and notably Arizona Congressman Jim Colby. That's a Bruce Kelly fun fact from his Wikipedia. Uh, he did publicity stunts. Ah, I love publicity stunts. Me too. Want to do one? I'd love to. It's been way too long. Some of these are really good. Yeah, some of the publicity stunts. Well, when you're, I guess, the PD of 80s on 8, you got to really step up and, and, and be that man. Create who's some who awareness. Can, yeah, and you yeah. got to be in what, control. So Wasn't he also the guy that did uh, Help Me Out? What was the term we used? Bruce Kelly voice. Oh, interlocutors? <laughs> oh, God. Fucking <laughs> Danny just fell down. <laughs> well, it's Who been a while since I had to say that. Who fucking came word. up with that? Dude, I don't know, man. He really wanted to do something like No, with but the... I don't think he came up with that. I think he, he just did. voiced it. He came no, up I think with he that? Did. He may have. I think that was a whole thing. What was an thing. interlocutor? Eric, maybe, am I wrong? Like, what, didn't he want to be involved and like this was like his whole thing? He sort of wanted to be a reporter within the Opie and Anthony show. Like, he was going to report oh, about I to be sad. what our lives <laughs> were, uh, what we do uh, during the commercials, when the mics are off, when the day's over, those kind of things. Mm-hmm. 
too bad. Not a bad concept. Oh, but getting back to all these great publicity uh, publicity stunts. Yes. Uh, let's see. Once uh, Bruce Kelly jumped in front, uh, he jumped into, excuse me, a vat of 20,000 gallons of orange jello. I mean, that's crazy. Oh, I mean, look. Shit. That's, that's pretty crazy, Jimmy. If you want people you to listen to, to you know, some Michael Jackson songs, that's the kind of shit you got to do. You got to give it to him on that. But that yeah. was back in the day. Then wait, wait, wait. I want to slow down a little bit. Jimmy, would you do the jello stuff? I'm thinking of imagine doing that and then realizing that you couldn't pull your way up and dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how humiliating. Drowning in jello. Oh, how, yeah, how many feet of jello? It would be uh, impressive, like Jimmy's saying, if it, it was, was seven, eight f- feet of jello. Well, it had to be a considerable amount, because there's. it says it was 20,000 gallons of orange flavored jello. That's a huge amount of gallons. gallons. Yeah. All right. It's got to be a lot. I don't know. <laughs> I can't really visualize that. But. Why would you do 20,000 gallons? You well, only to need create a, awareness. You only need a few <laughs> gallons. <laughs> That's right. That's I right. hate things, by the way, that create awareness. <laughs> I hate when they're done to create awareness. You just got to get the people talking. Like, who is that guy? Oh, now that you mention it. He's the PD for 80s on 8. 80s on 8? Where can I hear this? Boom, we, XM. Oh, no. There's, yeah. Do we, do we have an example, any examples of creating awareness? Jeez. We have so yeah. much to do today. I, well, you know what? Uh, real, real, since it was just uh, on the show like last week, how about Whoopi Goldberg with those, uh, those fucking piss diapers? That's creating awareness. That's right. Old women pee themselves. Whoopi I, technically, created awareness. we created awareness when we had No Filter Paul walking down 57th Street <laughs> shitting himself. <laughs> the show creates awareness with Whip About Wednesday. You, we you, gotta spread the word about titties. But you think we could do the No Filter Paul bit again? No! <laughs> I bet, no we can, well, we can do it. We'll just get in trouble afterwards. <laughs> was he actually <laughs> shitting while he was walking down the sidewalk? I know yeah. he shit when he got to XM. Yeah, he was shitting down his legs while he was walking down 57th Street. For the newer listeners, because we're, we're gaining them every day. You bet we are. Uh, uh, what did we do? We fed him what? I forgot the name. I don't of remember the, the. Yeah, I don't remember it either. But apparently, it makes you shit real fast. Yeah, really fast, and in large amounts. So we we had him uh, wear a diaper, and then for the walkover, we basically wanted him to shit the While entire he way. And then I remember we had to lay down paper like he was a dog when, we, when he got to XM. We had a guy on 57. Isn't that video up there still yeah, somewhere? Somewhere. He was shitting in the studio. <laughs> That's what we did. Why, why can't we do that anymore? Uh, health code violations? I don't know. Yeah, but There's radio no is magical. That's true. <laughs> That's some magic right there. You know, I don't Make know what made me think shit. of it the other day, but uh, that whole Tippy Tom incident when he had just that, like, it was like dried uh, clay in his underpants. Uh, <laughs> You know, <laughs> did you pick it up? I did. No, I, I didn't. No. I didn't the only reason I picked it up was no. <laughs> I picked it up because it, it was a rock to me. <laughs> it's seri- that was one of the strangest things yeah. I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, but it was made out of feces. <laughs> yeah, it was shit. not. <laughs> this, it wasn't a rock. It was a rock. <laughs> it was bacterial. It was hard duty. <laughs> that just it was like wood. You know those hard wood chips that you no, decorate no. a front lawn that? with. <laughs> I'm sorry, but if you find the sound because I banged it on the table and I, I believe Pat Duffy did as well. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, yeah, but you that know, was a rock, and it would go through a window. I'm telling you right now. Just imagine your poo stays in your underwear long enough, but that's where you problem. could throw it through a window. <laughs> right where before it's like petrified, it's right petri- before petrified. right before it made that sound on the table. It was in Tippy Tom's underpants, and it had come out of his bottom. Yes, like, yeah, that's where it was. His underwear it was, off. It was it becoming poo. a diamond. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had gloves on, silly goose. I'm not that stupid, but I fucking I fucking had to pick that thing up. Check you it out. You have to. Yeah. You have to. When? When's the you next time you're going to see Petrified Duty? There's Hopefully a reason never. you don't see it. It's disgusting. Yeah. Right. But that's because a wa- people flush it. That's a once in a lifetime <laughs> they, thing. They typically leave it in the homeless underpants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was. It's not a rare gem. It's not a. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's not something to be uh, admired. As a matter of fact, I would probably avoid it upon I used, sight. I used to live near a gem store, and we'd go in and see all the rare gems. I hate rare gems. And then some of them were made into like little elephants and stuff. And we would buy rare gems for our room. But if I went in there and had Petrified Duty in a fucking glass case, I'd have to buy that. You'd purchase it? Yes! What if it was from a homeless man? Who gives a, That makes it better. Oh. He was an icon. I did, uh, E-Rock, you got to find the the the, uh, the poo hitting the fucking <laughs> table. And it, I'll prove it's a rock. And also, well, we need an a uh, interjocular <laughs> whatever from Bruce Kelly. <laughs> I just snorted. An interlocular. Those are, that's going way interlocular. back, Interlocular's. That was a long what time ago. What were they exactly? Those little... Uh... There were stupid interviews that he thought <laughs> that were in-depth and interesting. Well, that was to, leading up to... Uh, wasn't that part of our big uh, relaunch? 
Yeah, it, it was. Um, oh, when we finally came back these, to radio, he did all these interviews with people associated with the show when we did uh, that event at the Hard Rock. Yeah, you know what it was? Are I think there? it was more. It was him really wanting to do something with the show, but having no idea what the show was about. I don't think anybody asked him to do this. Oh. Jesus, E-Rock hates Bruce Kelly. I know. What, what did he do to you? Yeah, man, he's Nothing. out of work, or or working yeah. at a shitty, lousy station somewhere. So, did he molest you to a Kaja Gugu song? <laughs> <laughs> no, he used. To, remember when he used to just show up? He like, liked us. Yeah, we'd be on when we were on at <laughs> seven in the morning. He would just be Two there. Two pieces of shit. <laughs> Look at oh, this bandy. What? Oh boy. No one could see him. I could. I, I, what do you got, Ira? <laughs> um, looking for the tippy Tom, but I have a, a Bruce Kelly interlocular with Bob Kelly. Ah. It's what? it's three. Uh, it's a little over three minutes. No. We can hear. How about we get the beginning of it? Okay. At the beginning, we should hear. All right. Because this is before Bob was really on the channel a lot, right? Yeah, I think so. It was basically a way to introduce everybody right. from the show because we were going national officially. I know, we were syndicated here and there to big cities, but this this uh, allowed us to be heard, you know, from coast to coast. So it was like an Opie and Anthony takeover. Yeah, I want to hear what stupid Bob sounds like when he was just right. getting uh, let's hear this indoctrinated. O and A. Yeah. Opie and Anthony are overpaid, but you know, then again, so is <laughs> they are really lucky to have a job. What? The worst of O and A. Hi, Bob Kelly. He's one of the Opie and Anthony uh, virus freaks, a and they're coming to get him right now. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening, man? What's <laughs> 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 this? Ah, ah, What's happening? He's so happy to be there always. They called him an, a, a virus freak. Uh, o and A freak. Virus freak, right? I don't know. If he, that just pr it further proves the point that Bob Kelly, uh, not Bob Kelly, uh, Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Kelly, just had he had no idea. Because Bob Kelly no is a clue. comedian, not like. You well, know, yeah, like, I don't know. Like, like I, a just, side show. I don't see the uh, point of yeah. wanting to be associated with something that you just have no idea about. Mm -hmm. Well, he was just trying to be like he used crazy language, like the, one of the like like O and A language. Look, yeah. the cool kid yes. showed up to yes. town, and he was like, "This is the train I got to get on." Wait till they hear my interjocular. <laughs> Oculars, get it right, Sam. Sorry, dude. He show some respect. He You're thought right. he he knew about us. He 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 had his. Uh, he, you well, know, he I, had he had the exclusive with the O and A freak Bob Kelly. <laughs> 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 All right, let's continue now. Let's is good. And, and they're coming to get him right now. <laughs> What's happening, man? <laughs> How do you feel O&A now on XM and totally uncensored, totally free? What? You're a stand-up comedian. How does that uh, totally let you loose here on O&A? It's fantastic. I'm so glad they're free. Now, I just want to know, do I get my two bucks back for the last eight months? But, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. It's <laughs> I apologize again. This is going to take a long time. Oh. I wish Bob Kelly was here. <laughs> Fuck, I wish Bob was in. This, we, so we you should, know when this is, We though. should call him and make him come all the way in to the studio <laughs> just so we can replay this for him. Do we know when this was, though? October of... I can, do you believe it's October of 04? No, this, no, no, no. This was, was when we went free. So this is yeah. right when they took us off the premium channel. This right, right, around, right. So I'm saying... Oh, no, we did, months in or no? It was about... Two, I, it was somewhere around 2005. Yeah, it's it's saying around March 2005. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, oh, eight months after that's October. When, that's when Elo came in and said, you know, what the fuck is this company doing? You're just burying these idiots. We got to, you know, put them front and center. Elo saved our ass. Yes, he did. In the end, he was a corporate guy, but he was one of the better ones, that's for sure. He was great. I told you I saw him in Chicago. I mean, his wife came to my show. and I, was, I, I see him on TV. <laughs> Nobody recognized him there, though. Where? When I saw him at the show. Really? He came to see me, yeah. Was he wearing his pink shirt? He looked very thin. But he, he is that guy, though, I'm saying. He didn't just uh, well, he forget about us when he left. He changed his life. This place was right. killing him. Yeah. I've had conversations. This place was killing him. He, he was uh, bloated. He was a bloated alcoholic, losing uh, l losing his battle on life in general. <laughs> yeah. Didn't he crash a car even? Did he? Yes, he crashed his sports car. This place was killing him. <laughs> and then when he left, he uh, got into that Oprah aura and changed his entire life. That's what yeah. you're looking at. Now he fucking runs road races. He runs every day. He doesn't drink, or if he does, very, very little. I, I think he doesn't drink at all, actually. I think not at all. And he looks great. And now he wears pink shirts for Oprah. I'm like, who is this guy? I just I just had a conversation with him yesterday on the phone. Because I watched that behind-the-scenes Oprah show on OWN. I know. Say what you want. I don't know. Whatever. But all of a sudden, I guess Oprah, every year for her birthday, the whole staff, you're looking at a billionaire. Yeah. Oprah's a billionaire. Every day, Oprah's birthday is a, is a company holiday where everyone has to bring her a present. 
for her birthday, and then they all get they all go into her office that looks like a living room. This office is just amazing. It's a great place to hang out because you don't feel like you're at work. And then she sits there, and everyone one by one gives her a present. And there's Elo with his pink shirt and his gift. Well, they didn't show his gift, so I wrote him like, "Oh, you didn't get Oprah a gift." He goes, "Oh, I got her a printer." I'm like, "That's fucking lame." Printer. I know. He goes, "Yeah, just I know." Ex- ex- write that off as a business expense. Yeah. Exactly, and you're all going to use it in the office. Yeah, you, know? <laughs> you want a printer. So, for I actually kind of like that she does that, though, because she takes her staff on, like, fucking cruises. She treats her staff good. She seems to be uh, pretty uh, pretty cool. Yeah. You know, she lets her guard down for this kind of reality show they're doing. I'm pretty amazed that she would do this after all these years, but showing another side of her. Well, the show, the and, Elo, struggling. and Elo just shows up every once in a while, and, and he's, a, he's a guy among a bunch of broads. Seems like he has a wonderful life over there. Yeah, very. It's a lot easier than this. Uh, they look up to him. They think place. he's smart. Well, he's he's the top dog. Him and this girl Sherry. That's it. Nobody's and then bo- and then above those two is just Oprah. That's where he's at in the Oprah Empire. Our old boss. There's nobody emailing him pictures of erections. All right, let's. <laughs> is he right yes. under Oprah? I mean, like that's. <laughs> he started out a pos- he started out two below her, and now he's one. What happened to the other person? Did he pass him? They... If Oprah moves on, then I guess it. Then I guess it's Elo's show. That would be how great. Do, how does that work? Yeah, no, it's it's uh, Sherry who's been with Oprah for a long time, and uh, right by Sherry's side now is Elo, and then Oprah. That's it. That is the that's the uh, the pyramid over there. Wow. The structure of how that works. Pretty amazing, isn't yeah, it? He fucking certainly failed upward, as they say. <laughs> he sure did. In this place. All right, back to the uh, interlocutor with Bob, <laughs> Bob Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> the ONA Bucks freak. back for the last eight months. But, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. <clears throat> it should be free. More people get to listen to these uh, these uh, two gentlemen, Opie and Anthony, uh, get more fans, and then they can take over the world. I think that's their plan, and be number one in the universe. Oh, Why failed. do you like being a part of the ONA show? <laughs> because they have, uh, they're the best fans in the world. They have the best fans. No, I'm just kidding. They don't. Their fans are evil, atrocious creeps, but that's why I love them. Oh, and A, because oh. They, they're the best. They're the best. <laughs> you get to say what you want. They're the funniest thing on the radio. The absolute truth. You get to say what you want about uh, oh. fucking a sink. Where else could I tell people that I fucked a sink when I was in juvie hall? What show will I be able to tell that on? The Today Show? No. The FCC and Pause. censors. He just rambled. <laughs> Pause. It's like he, he wants everyone to think that the Today Show just calls him on a regular basis, but he got he can't tell that story. How yeah. about this, Bob? You can't tell any stories on the Today Show. Because <laughs> they never invited you. They don't want you. <laughs> right. right. You hear what he did there? The, the, like this, he, he's the big get out there in the, in the world. He's choosing. Yeah. But he's choosing which stories that he can tell only on Opie and Anthony. Another story he can't tell on the Today Show is one where he rescued a baby from train tracks. Why? Because they're not interested in talking to you. There's nothing you have to say. He ought to say, I can't tell this or any other story on the Today Show. Because they've never called me. They've never. Never called but he you. Made the, he, you know, let's tear down another wall. He wants the listeners to think he's he's the big guest. So yeah. You, so you're saying the honest answer would have been, I like doing the Opie and Anthony show because they're the only show that will have yes, me. Yes, but they're the only <laughs> ones that will have me. And I can tell my dirtier stories that if network television acknowledged me, wouldn't let me tell. <laughs> right. But they don't. They but since they don't me. acknowledge me, it's I irrelevant. can also tell my clean stories on Opie and Anthony, too. <laughs> what? I'm going to take that to the Today Show? No, Bob, you're really... Uh... Yeah, what am I going to do when I say? Tell with Matt Lauer. I don't know. Right. Probably introduce yourself and explain why you're there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Wish Bob was here so I could punch him in the face. Or maybe he's hoping that you know when Al Roker does his weather, he's in the background and he could hopefully try to tell the story before they 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 cut to the fucking sports. Yeah, you know, Al, boom, down, fucking a sink, you know, <laughs> right. drizzling cum. He's trying to use like weather terms. Right. <laughs> oh, he's the worst. Uh, All right, go back to the interlocutor. <laughs> what show will I be able to tell that on? The Today Show? No. The FCC and censorship on the radio. I think that uh, satellite radio is uh, the new cable, you know, like cable television, man. You finally get to hear what people really think. And uh, creeps like me get to get on the radio, finally. You know how many terrestrial radio shows I've done and had to talk about how my mother used to hit me as a kid? And <laughs> I actually told one time, I told this story when I was in juvie how I used to f- uh, fuck a sink. I get a lot of emails now about people, and they, they got it all wrong. They think I actually fuck the whole sink. Or actually fuck the drain of the sink, which is physically impossible. I actually just lied on top of the sink, just put my hand on the edge of the sink, well lubricated, and then I pushed my mule inside of my hand. 
And the sink, all it was was leverage. It was just leverage. It was a place that I could put my hand where it would be sturdy enough. I could just pump it. Me pumping the hand instead of the hand pumping me. So it's actually having sex. They're in fucking the sink. So please do it right. I don't want people getting hurt trying to fuck the drain of a sink. 30 seconds. Tell me about OP. By the way, we're 30 seconds of rambling audio is about to come. Yeah. Well, that was pretty rambling. That too. was horrendous, but at least it had a point. This is 30 seconds. I'll be I saw what Bruce just said. Yeah. This is not going to be good. Ah, right. hey, dude, they're, uh, he's just going to riff. You know, dude, you're crazy. Uh, boom, those two dudes should be committed. Uh, oh, this is going to be humiliating. Yeah, Bruce Kelly's the no editing. Yeah, he really does just leave it all in, doesn't he? You edit, right? You're the editing key. Well, I edit occasionally, but I only edit pauses. Mm. Like, I edit all spaces between words. <laughs> so it's one oh, one no. long word with no space, no pause, no punctuation. <laughs> that would be a nightmare. Listen. It would be horrendous. <laughs> Can we have an example of that? Well, just like as we're talking right now. If I edited that, it would be... Well, just as we're talking right now, if I edited that, it's horrendous. <laughs> it would just be awful. But uh, I've never gotten over the Bob Kelly uh, sync thing. I forgot about it. Did you? Yeah. Well, then this is good. We're playing it. it if is. you forgot, then some listeners forgot. Oh, I've never definitely. heard this before. That's a weird one, isn't it? We've all stuck our penises in some weird shit, but you that can. sink thing is strange, man. Would you do that? No. Why would you do that? No. Wouldn't the sink be cold to begin with? Depends. It was a coal, maybe. A what? Coal. K-O-H-L. <laughs> sink friend. Jesus. All right, back to the interlocutor. <laughs> You're about to hear Bob Kelly explain the show in 30 seconds. And go. Trying to fuck the drain of a sink. 30 seconds. Tell me about Opie and Anthony. These two guys are actually breaking ground, making new radio, making history. Mm -hmm. Along with Jim Norton, they're actually saying how they feel about things instead of saying what they other people think they should say about stuff. They're truth tellers. They're prophets. They're actually uh, close to Jesus Christ of modern day age. They give men what they want, boobs on the highway every Wednesday. God bless them. God bless Opie and Anthony. Bob Scott, you're great. Bob Scott, you motherfucker. It's Bob Kelly. <laughs> 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 Bob Scott. <laughs> Bob Scott. That made it worse. <laughs> Bob Kelly's so forgettable. Bob Scott. In this Scott. interview. In this interview, Bobby. In this interview. Relax. Bob Scott. Where does Bob Scott come from? Is that the end of that? No, there's uh, there's still about 25. Seconds. Oh, why? Right, because now Bob Kelly has to give him a beating. Yes. All right, let's finish this up. God bless Opie and Anthony. Bob Scott, you're great. Bob Scott, you motherfucker. It's Bob Kelly. I'd stab you right in the neck with my fucking pencil right now. Bob Scott. Ma with with my fucking pencil right now. <laughs> my fucking pencil. Why is he going to stab him with my fucking pencil? <laughs> Can we hear that again with my fucking pencil? <laughs> <laughs> fucking what happened to Bob? He's playing bagpipes. He's hot under the collar. <laughs> Bob Scott, you motherfucker. It's Bob Kelly. I'd stab you right in the neck with my fucking pencil. <laughs> with my fucking pencil. <laughs> stab you with my pencil. I'm Bob Scott. Uh, no, he's is a that Celt. It? No, there's a tiny bit more. I go. Bob Scott, you motherfucker. It's Bob Kelly. I'd stab you right in the neck with my fucking pencil right now. <laughs> Bob Scott. You stink. Now. Back to the worst of Opie and Anthony on XM202. High voltage. Super. Oh, they're going to be confused that we're in uh, Best of We're Not. That was an old fucking clip that we had to play today. It should tell you some old clip of high voltage. High voltage. I hated that. Well, the stupid uh, lawyer uh, lawyer lady, I, I, I ended up liking her in the end, but she had no business uh, being part of radio. She helped me. I liked her, too. I liked her, but she was a good lawyer, but she wasn't good at radio. And uh, I remember we were doing the press conference, and she was she was on an Excel. She called me. She said, "We need a name for the channel." I like, I said, "Okay, give me a day. I'll figure something out. I'll, I'll get with Jimmy and Ann, and we'll figure some shit out." And by the time the fucking Excel pulls into Penn Station, and she gets to the press conference, she goes, "We're going to call it High Voltage." I'm like, "That's the worst name ever," because we're trying to get away from the shock jock thing. Yeah, because that's based on a, a shock jock thing, right? High Voltage. I'm like, it's stupid. Well, also energy. And, but and it's stunk either way. And then she goes, it's too late. We already sent it to the printer. I'm like, why did you even ask me then? But I guess they decided on the on the train and then they called somebody and, and, and got shit you know, uh, underway to be printed up. 
I like to. I wanted to call it uh, the Laugh of Palooza. <laughs> <laughs> Not funny in any context. Nope. Voss is here. That good for him. Let him fucking wait. We're taking a break in two minutes, and then we'll have Voss in here. So where were we, Sam? That was a little off-roading we did. Huh? Yes. Back we're, to the wrestler. We're that death damn clock. good. So well, we're trying to do the uh, the wrestler death clock. We want to go 100 days without a wrestler dying, and we haven't done the bit since September. We can't even just throw it, throw it to the side, but now yeah. another guy just died, so now we're just getting an update. Well, we never made the 100 days, as we sure. said. It's, it hasn't, it's been, you know, progressively worse, and we had to reset the clock Many times. yesterday. Oh, is that where, what we're up to now? We made it to 33 days. Who was the one before yesterday? Sir Oliver Humperdinck. Oh, that was the guy with the Bruce Kelly guy. Right. Oh, okay. And that's who took so us down that So then we went 33 road. days, and then we lost who yesterday? Somebody who you guys uh, spent a lot of time mocking about three years ago. Really? Bill Sherman? <laughs> Not Bill Sherman. <laughs> Wait, we mocked him? Very on, much. On our show? Very much. I know this is a big wrestler because it, he was trending on Twitter yesterday, even though I don't know anything about him. And I don't even remember that we mocked him. Yeah, because... I know the angle. I know that you did uh, a little something with this guy at an independent wrestling show. With sweet and sour Larry Sweeney. Larry Sweeney. Did yeah. we have him on the air? And it, did, did he call in? Uh, no, he never did. We tried to get him on. He never called in. But he was the one. this was the first time I did a wrestling gig. So this was when I went in the ring and did that horrible low blow. And then you guys oh. spent about... Remember the low blow? No, I vaguely remember Sam doing the wrestling. He had a he had a jump in the ring, and then he did one of those low blow moves. Yeah, he actually they, did a that, move. They reserved that move for girls, but they gave it to Sam. I crotched him. Were you good? I thought I was quite good. Dude, you know, Snooki was way more impressive in the wrestling ring than you. Well, right? she had better training, I think. She did some kind of fucking backflip, two backflips, and then did some move. But you know what? When you... I came out to the ring, the fans cheered me, and when I left, they booed me. So I did. My Wait, job. was Donald Trump still wrestling? Remember that? <laughs> yes. Well, look at the Sam. Like, wow, because Sam's so strong, he's able to throw that guy into the fucking ropes. What are you doing now? Is Larry Sweeney in this video here? <laughs> That's him on the mat right there. Oh, really? He's just standing there, some fucking kid that doesn't belong in the ring with his hoodie on. <laughs> and then Sam's not sure if he was, he's supposed to leave the well, ring. The dumb referee completely destroyed the spot. When do you do the low blow? When right do you, before that. Right before that? Mm -hmm. uh, so we go back. Yeah, <laughs> it was missable. All right, so Larry Sweeney's in the ring. This is yeah, that's Larry Sweeney, and the boxer is Larry Barnes. Oh, it was a wrestling boxing match. Yeah. So why didn't the oh. boxer just punch the shit out of him? He did in the end. Referee went down. Oh, there I oh, go. He's helping the ref up. Got to he... check the referee. Oh! And there's Sam doing low the blow. chick move. Sam does the low blow. Wait, why are you cocking your fist? And then you gotta you gotta hope that the guy gets up on his own because you can't lift him no, off I the mat. No, I lifted him up and threw him and into then... Pete Gas from the Mean Street Posse. Oh, he was a big fucking WWF guy. Yeah, Pete Gass, remember, that's man. my boy. Do you think that the, the, when the box show and they're like, who has to push me? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Her? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you got involved with this nonsense. It wasn't nonsense. This it was a good wrestling show back in what, 2008? 2008, yeah. Oh, we, we should get a couple of these videos on the Facebook page today. Okay. Um, has a lot of views. It sure does, man. 8,000 views. 8,000. Three years later. Well, I mean, it hasn't been... Progress it, it had its hit and its moment, and then it, you know, and then just died faded away, internet, like most videos. Well, what, it's not a viral phenomenon. It should be. You think so? Well, if this Larry Sweeney guy was trending on Twitter yesterday, I, people would be searching out the Larry Sweeney videos today. What the real reason that you were making fun of both me and Larry Sweeney is because this was also the first time I cut a wrestling promo to promote this gig, and Larry Sweeney was he was in the promo with me. We got that. We got the audio version. Like I said, the video will be up on our Facebook page, Opie and Anthony, in a little bit. So uh, this guy's now dead. We're listening to a dead guy. Yeah, he apparently hung himself at a wrestling school. Wow. And how old was he? Suicide. He was 29. 29? What is going on with this? Sh I don't want to do this bit anymore. It's sad. It's fucking creepy. It's weird. He had, it's not even fun. He had problems. A lot of those guys, I think, uh, use substances, right? Yeah, and he had uh, he had some mental problems. He had to leave wrestling for a little while because apparently he had a breakdown and he was bipolar. Oh, oh, bipolar's the worst. Is that the me, me, me people? Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, I mean, 
but they're also the the rage issues and yeah. you know, whatever they could they, 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 they just buy you know two poles it's uh, nuts uh, are they the uh, everything's just fine i'll fucking kill you exactly those people yes oh and that's what because he had everybody thought he was going to be like a big he was going to bring managers back because he was very talented they Except, don't have managers anymore in wrestling? Not, not really. Hey, uh, you're an, a wrestling expert. Uh, what happened to what's-his-name up there in uh, Massachusetts? Who? Well, I don't know. One of the Bedford Teddy. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know the big wrestling story where they fucking uh, took him 10 minutes to get him out of the ring? Oh, the Scott co- Hall? Scott Hall. Scott Hall, is uh, he's Razor Ramon. Razor Ramon <laughs> has some major problems now, huh? Yeah. He used to be a big one in the in the wrestling world. He was WWF. He was at, and uh, what else? Yeah, and WWF, WCW, oh, right, everything. Right, right, okay. But he's a he's like a notorious substance abuser at this point. He's had a lot of alcohol and uh, substance related problems. He's like Jake the Snake Roberts. He's always he's kind of like the wrestler, right? That's why the wrestler. He's that very similar, very accurate. To, except. This except he get the wrestler didn't get fucked up all the time. I, I uh, a bunch of people tweeted the video and he looks like shit. Yeah, he's falling down in the ring and he's slurring his speech. And then the can we the, find that video real fast for Jimmy? The scumbag wrestling promoters. Once this became a TMZ story, uh, took the event and made it a pay per view on their website. So oh. that you could all see Scott Hall. And oh, so we, we're not even gonna be we're not gonna be able to see this no, clip anymore. You could see the clips. Yeah, it's wow. it's really sad. Yeah. And, then, and then what's his name uh, just disappeared, and they're saying, is he even alive? Who? I don't know. One of the one of the tumblers from the <laughs> WWF. One of the tumblers? Uh, help me out. I forgot their names. He had the weird fucking beard. The chicks loved him. He would climb the ladders. Captain Lou. Oh, Jeff Captain... Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Lou. <laughs> Jeff Hardy. Yeah, Jeff. There's rumors that he's uh, gone real bad, too. Jeff Hardy, he was main eventing a TNA pay-per-view, and they had to end the match after one minute. Why? Apparently, he was all fucked up, and Sting wasn't going to wrestle him, so he just threw him on the mat and covered him. And that was supposed to be the main it was event? A pay-per-view main event. The oh, fans were outraged. Shit. So, and, and, no one and he has, hasn't been on TV since. No one has seen him since. They shouldn't be bringing him to a hospital. This this is Scott Hall. Maybe we could get this on our Facebook page. This is unbelievable, this video, yeah. by the way. you got to see this. And he's not putting on a bit. No, 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 no. And I swear, uh, this very morning I asked Sam about this video, and I was like, what's the deal? Like, does he have some severe health problems, or was he just really fucked up? He gets really fucked up. And you that, heard someone... I mean, he can't walk. They did a... Uh, this whole time, he's just trying to get into the ring. That's how fucked up he is. And you heard somebody in the audience go, he shouldn't be going in the ring. He should be going to the hospital. That guy, that guy yes. in the blue, he had to actually flip his leg over the, the middle rope. Like, Scott couldn't even do it himself. But, he goes, holy and, shit. And he wow. Goes, this guy was fucking... fucking and this guy was huge for many years. He's a major star. And, I mean, but he was just, he? Yes. What's yeah. his name? He was Razor Ramon, and then he was Scott Hall. Chico! This is him trying to talk to the audience. Holy shit. And then it took, what, 10 minutes to get him out of the ring, right? Yeah, stumbling out. And then he, there's a, another clip somewhere, unless they took it down, where he was in the ring and actually trying to do a spot. And one of the guys just kind of shoved him, and he just falls over. Like, it wasn't like he was taking a bump. He just collapsed and fell over. But I think he tipped a few back. Yeah, he he had even when he was like main eventing in WCW, he was coming out to the ring. You could tell he was drunk. They had to take him off TV eventually. Like, yeah, he's another guy. He would have been at, like, like even th- that's when I was watching wrestling. Yeah, you know? and that was a good time because Scott Hall was so fucked up all the time. <laughs> and he would come to the ring and cut promos. He was drunk. Everybody loved him. Like he would have been an even bigger star. Was he a big star? He was, he was a big huge, star. man. Yeah, he, he was, was a really because he, he had a he tag team with uh, with Kevin Nash. They were the Outsiders. That was like a big deal for a while. What year was he big? That was like ninety six, ninety seven. Yeah, he, he we were started, in Boston. Yeah, he was as Razor Ramon. He was big from ninety four to ninety six, and then in WCW he was really big from ninety seven to ninety nine. So he had about a five year run. And he's too old now to recapture any of that. You think? Yeah, and he's all, uh, his health is just terrible. Like, he's just a lot of years of major that's why, abuse. That's why I don't want to do the wrestling bit anymore. It's, it's too real. That guy that guy is, could be dead any day. He's fucked I'm up. always amazed by guys 
who have a little bit of fame or even a lot of fame for a short period of time and blow it. Right. Yeah. Like if you fade away, you fade away. But guys that blow it are always interesting to me. He could if he if he kept him. There once some Scott Hall. This is when he was a main eventer. Don't sing it, bring it. So he uh, he's doing his catcher. He was he was dry. You could tell he's got two belts on. Like he was a main eventer, and they were letting him do this. Even that's how big he was. Oh, he's he was he's fucked, fucked up, up in this video too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's been one of those fucked up guys for a while, for a but now time. it's catching up to him, huh? Well, because he doesn't have like the he's just got yeah. The substance is now. He doesn't have the and, fame. And the video we just played of him slowly getting into the ring and slurring really badly is on TMZ. But the fucking assholes, they only gave you a piece because they wanted you to pay to for it. Pay for it. If he had kept himself clean, he could probably still be wrestling. Jesus. Because he's, he's not that old, right? He's probably in his like late 40s to early 50s. Which you, you but you could still do. You, you, know, you could still do it at that age in uh, the yeah. WWE. Yeah. Who's the black guy he's wrestling there? That's Booker T. Yeah, that was Booker T. He's a, he was an animal. Who was the black guy we had in the XM who had done time in jail? MVP. MVP. He was he, a good guy. He's he no re- longer with them. He got released. He's wrestling in Japan, though. He's doing well. He's but, doing all right? Yeah. Because right. it's, 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 I don't like this bit. It's, it's sad. Wrestling is a, is a, so, I mean, So Larry business. Sweeney dies, and, uh. Yeah, he hung himself in a wrestling school. That's kind of sad. At and, 29. And this is Sam doing a promo with the guy. The video will be up online. It's just Facebook three, page. Three years ago, so. Hoping Anthony a little bit. Probably by the time we come back from va- uh, vacation, hello, from, uh, break. But yeah. Now we have young Rich Foster here today. Yeah, but here's the audio of Sam. To those of you who don't know who I am, I'm primetime Sam Roberts from XM202, a producer of the Opie and Anthony show, a host of the... Yeah, we didn't need the plug there. A what? A producer for the Opie and Anthony why, why show. Why are you dragging us into this crap? Why? The, it more Less to plug you and more to inflate myself, <laughs> to be honest. The Sam Sam show and a graduate of New Rochelle High School. And I am honored to have been asked to come this April 5th to the New Rochelle High School, to the New York State Wrestling Federation, and call the Boxer versus Wrestler match. Larry Sweet and Sour Sweeney versus Larry Barnes. Fans, I'm going to call this just the way you want to see it, because I know entertainment, and I know what you want. I'm going to call it right down the middle. <laughs> oh, prime time, huh? Yeah. Big Sam, huh? Yeah. Larry Sweeney, pleased to meet you. How you doing? Good. So, uh, so, so, so tell me something. You're going to be the judge, huh? Yeah. The judge is this, this uh, wrestler versus boxer match. Sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right, great. Well, uh, listen, man, um, I think we got a lot to talk about. I mean, I'm a big fan of yours. I'm a big fan of your show. Thank you. I mean, really, uh, long time, long time. I mean, ever since you've been around. Big fan of your show? Well, I was also on it. I don't think he ever heard us. Well, he was he was a heel, so now I think the, he may have been trying to grease the palms of a that, certain judge. After hearing part of this, now I understand why he killed himself. Why would you say that? He was kind of bummed out. He had to do this. And no. he, not, he never got over this, Sam. He, he was. I he think you killed a wrestler. He was fine with this. He got a lot of promotion out of it. He was on been really, uh, long time, long time. I mean, ever since you've been around, I've been a really, you know, I've been, I've been following your career, and it's an honor for me to meet you. And uh, uh, you know, there are a couple things that I'd like to talk about in private. Um, here, I've got sure. a card. Why don't I give you a card and have your people call my people? All right? I'll do that. All right, that's great. Huh? Good to meet you. <laughs> Thanks. Who are your people? Why don't who, I? Who would this guy call? I guess more your people. <laughs> 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 there you go. End of bit. <laughs> well, that guy's dead. Yes. It's kind of creepy. It's really creepy. Just because he's young, 29. Jesus, what the fuck? And one year ago, everybody was talking about how much potential he had. I, like, everybody was talking about him on the uh, indie scene. Yeah, and I, I, I. Why did he have to fucking hang himself at a wrestling school? That's it's, creepy. I had to do it there. I don't know, and that and that's. But just, he, he had a, when I was talking to him, like that's selfish too, man. Because then someone that loves you has to cut you down. What the fuck? Or some fucking maintenance guy at the wrestling school? Exactly. You think? Some yeah. Guy, the guy who runs the school probably went through his pockets before he cut him down. I always wonder who has to cut you down. Put him behind yourself. You know who's selfish was Madoff's son. 
Because he hung himself with his fucking baby sleeping in the next room, and he sent, like, an email to his wife who was away. Mm-hmm. What a piece of shit. With a baby. Like, what if the kid started coughing and needed to be rolled over or whatever? What Something. What a piece of shit. Yeah. Very. Hang yourself, but don't do it when you, your kid is there alone with you. The kid is, like, fucking two. Yeah, call someone to go, hey, can you take uh, my kid to the park? I, yeah. I, I got a call. I got to hang make. myself real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or do it that way, too, sure. All right, we're going to break. We got Rich Voss outside the studio, and um, and uh, E-Rock found Tippy Tom's rock uh, poo. I'm telling you, it's a rock. rock poo. You're going to hear the sound. You're going to hear the sound for yourself, because some people are saying it was sort of clayish and stuff. No, this was a rock. It looked, it looked like baked clay. Okay, fair enough. But, but it, it was. Do you agree with me that if you <laughs> threw it at this window, the window would at least crack? Um, if there was a piece with enough mass, y- yeah, you could definitely Look, break a window. Okay. It, it felt like a rock. It looked like clay. But the bottom line is, it was feces. It was. It was doo doo. Okay, we're gonna play the clip next. <laughs> it's crap. It's one minute. We'll get Voss in here. We're gonna play uh, Tippy Tom's uh, rock poo. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. That's so funny. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. We'll figure out some other shit. I think it's because if you just turned in, you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Tippy Tom's rock, rock poo? poo? We haven't talked about his rock poo in a while. It, it has it's to just, come up. It sounds very... It's a strange sentence out of context. <laughs> rock poo. Rock poo. We miss Tippy Tom. He was probably the greatest side side fucking character ever. O and A freak, show. you mean? I miss him. Or whatever you want to call it. What what did Bruce call him? O and A freaks yeah. like Bob Kelly Tippy and Tippy Tom, Tom was the number one fucking O and A freak. He's the original Golden Bun. Sorry to those other guys uh, who I forgot. You're talking about Twitchels. <laughs> Twitchels, yeah. <laughs> Louis Twitchels Santani. <laughs> he was a weird one, man. He was a strange fuck. Yes, he is. All right, we're babbling. We'll see you in a bit. Rob, <laughs> Rob, <laughs>